Hello and welcome to Cool Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebane. We have a very fun bag to make for you today. This is the Ellie Handbag by So Many Creations. We love partnering with Jessica Vandenberg to do tutorials on her bag patterns because she is a quilter first. And when she writes her bag patterns, she does it with the mind of a quilter. So the instructions are really easy to follow if that is your primary craft. You're gonna use quarter inch seams for everything and everything's pretty clear and easy to follow. Our tutorials are meant to be sort of an extra for those of you who are visual learners who need to actually see it happening as opposed to just seeing a photo of it. So what you're gonna to need to do is pick up a pattern which you can get on our website, shop.quiltedictonomous.com. We also have kits available while supplies last in these two options. And then you can follow along step-by-step step with us and you can actually see it happening. So that way, like for example, I screwed up multiple times doing this front pocket. So you're gonna be able to see how it's actually done. So that way, when you are doing it at home, you know what you're supposed to do and you can see it as being done as well as seeing the picture instruction. So that way you don't have to redo it a couple of times like I did. But let's take a peek at this bag and let's look at all the things we're gonna learn. So this is a great size bag. You can definitely fit your wallet, your keys, plus a few other things in it. My video editor said it's great like mom bag once they're outside of diapers because you can fit like a snack and a water bottle in there. I would argue you could also fit diapers and wipes plus whatever you need because I definitely fit all that in a clutch when I go to church on Sundays. But uh, you definitely, it's really fun. So what we're gonna learn to do here is we're gonna learn to install a zipper with a pocket on the inside here. We're gonna learn how to attach anchor straps and we're gonna learn how to do a recess zipper. This is actually a lot easier than it looks because we use a lot of fusible web to get everything in place first so we know exactly everything is gonna turn out right. We are gonna learn how to do some divided pockets for your lining, how to insert the lining and turn your bag, and lastly, how to do some box pleats. And so that way everything turns out really nice and has some great structure to your bag. It's really a fun bag to do. And I wouldn't say it's a great beginner bag. If you've never made a bag before, check out our tourist tote tutorial. That's the bag to start with. But if you're ready for a next step, you wanna check out some zippers maybe. This is a really fun one to do. Let's just give you a quick preview of what it looks like. We'll take a look at the one that has the or the cork and canvas on here. And this one is just so cute. So it has this whole pocket, so you can pull everything apart. You can fit stuff in here on the outside, and it's really adorable. We're gonna talk a little bit about zippers in here too. We have a new zipper and hardware supplier, and it's really great because this has a metal look, but it is plastic, so it's gonna behave real nicely for you. And then we've got, obviously, our handles, and we have our recess zipper up top. And then we've got our divided pockets on the inside and just plenty of room, lots and lots of room in this bag. Really nice, really fun one. And we've got it kind of at two price points if you wanna go with a kit option. So we have Nocturne, which is my fabric collection, and we have our painterly on the bottom, which kind of looks like cork. And then on the top, we have our, our Tossed Owl, which also has that little painterly background for it. And that one has the graphite, the dark, for the hardware and it looks really cool. And because it's all quilters cotton, it's gonna be at a little bit better price point um, than our canvas and our cork. But using canvas and cork in a bag will mean that this baby is gonna last for years and years and years and take a lot of abuse. This one will also last for a long time, but it's gonna wear out faster because quilters cotton just is not the same density and durability in for a bag as these materials here. So a little bit higher price point, but you're gonna be able to use this for years and years and years to come. I have one that I have used and abused for like four years now. It's still fabulous, I love it. So great option for you. And it's gonna retain its structure really well over time as well because of all of the stiffer materials. It is a little bit more challenging to sew with just because it is so stiff, but it is definitely, if you have not made a bag with canvas and cork yet, and this man, your bucket list. It's, it's really fun, you're gonna love it. All right, let's get into the tutorial. So if you get a kit from us, it's going to include everything you need for your fabric, your zipper, things like that. But if you are going to be getting your own, you're gonna make sure that you are sourcing those things out. 
But even if you get a kit, there's a few things that I recommend that you have that are gonna make your life easier. If you are using the cork and canvas, a jeans needle is a must, so that way you can stitch through everything and have your stitches look nice and even. The steam -a seam is really helpful for when you are placing your recess zipper in, so that's a good thing to have on hand. And lastly, even if you are working with just the plain old yeah, decor bond and quilters cotton, you're going to want some of these quilters perfect clips. They're really great because you can just clamp everything together, hold everything in place without having to shove your pins through because let's face it, quilting pins are not meant to do that and we don't wanna leave big holes in our bag that are gonna be visible later. So this is a really great alternative to that. We can pick up a pack in your favorite color. So the very first thing you're going to want to do is cut all of your pieces and all your interfacing and fuse all of your interfacing. Um, we have shown fusing interfacing before. What you're going to do is you're going to center it on the back with the fusible side feet or the bumpy side facing the wrong side of your fabric. Then you're going to flip everything over and give everything a good press from the right side. This one actually, it has been so long since I prepped it it's gonna need a little bit extra here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that while I keep explaining the process of fusible interfacing. So the reason why you wanna fuse with your fabric side up is we make mistakes. And so it is a lot easier to get your fusible off of your ironing surface than it is off of your iron if you have accidentally fused it to the wrong side. So it's just a lot, a lot easier to have it going from the fabric side, because then if you messed up and you have the glue side facing down, a lot less trouble at that point. All right, so you can see we have some edges here. This is going to be our handle. This is left open on purpose, so that way it is easier to fold it in and around those anchors, the strap anchors a little bit later. But the first thing we're gonna do here is prep our straps. Now, if you are doing your own thing for the bag and you have purchased cork for your straps, make sure you read the instructions because it's a little bit different because cork uh, does is okay to have a raw edge. It's not gonna unravel for you. But this is what you're going to do if you have fabric like I do. So we're gonna start, we've gotta turn this in. So I'm gonna start just by meeting my raw edges here and I'm gonna press it hot dog style going all the way down. All right, so now we have a nice crease line going down the center. So we wanna meet the centers. So that way we are gonna have a folded edge on the outside. So I'm just gonna start going down one side, folding it in to meet where that center crease is and working my way down with that iron to sort of help set that. Now for the second one, technically we're just gonna be folding it into center, but what I like to do, because no one's gonna know if we like really hit it to the center, what they will know is if this edge is not even with this edge when we fold it over. So what I like to do is fold it over on top of this edge that I've already pressed down, making sure that those edges are nice and even as I work. And that's what I'm gonna be kind of judging because that, at the end of the day, that's what everyone's gonna see is, is are your handles even on both sides. And if they're not, it really doesn't matter if they were even on the inside because no one's gonna see that. All right, so now we need a top stitch along these, but just to help keep everything nice and neat and organized, what I like to do is just use my clips. That way it's just gonna be held together really nice and neatly as I'm stitching. Three are, is plenty for what we're doing here, but it'll just allow it to kind of stay in place and that's one less thing you have to worry about when you're stitching. Now I'm gonna set my sewing machine up to sew an eighth of an inch stitch. That is the smallest stitch that my machine will do. If you have a presser foot that has a guide on the side here, it's really helpful to use right now because then you can't get off. Otherwise you have to keep everything lined up with the edge the whole time, which is also a totally doable thing. I'm also gonna increase my stitch length to 3.0 because it's a decorative stitch. And I mean, it's holding it together, but its main function is to also look pretty. And so we don't need to have a teeny tiny stitch for this section. All right, so I'm just gonna stitch down, making real careful to keep the edge of my strap even with the edge of the presser foot, so that top stitching looks very neat and lovely. And we're all done. And you do wanna make sure that you are choosing thread 
that is going to coordinate really well because this is all going to be very visible. And also, you're gonna to wanna to have the same thread in the top and the bobbin because you might be seeing this from both sides, especially on the strap here. Once I make it all the way down one side, I'm just going to go ahead and stitch the same all the way down the other side. So go ahead and repeat that with your second strap and then set them both to the side. Next, we're going to work on our outside bottom. You're gonna do this for both the front and the back side. You'll have four pieces that look like this and we're gonna sew them together into sets of two to make a decorative bag bottom. And on one side, it will also have a zipper, which is really a cool little feature to have that outside pocket. Now I'm using cork fabric for this. This is sustainably harvested from trees in Portugal. And the trees are marked so that they're not harvested again for a certain period of time to allow the tree time to grow more. And it doesn't harm the tree in any way. In fact, it can be beneficial to it. So this is a really equal friendly way to have a leather look without actually having leather because it's, it's vegan. So um, the back has, it feels like felt, um, but it has this treatment to it to make it soft and pliable. And it actually is really easy to cut um, on use just using a plain rotary cutter. It's also easy to sew through and it is a very durable material to use. I love using it on my bag bottoms because it holds up so well. Um, eventually the structure that you'll see here um, when we finish it, that does kind of get a little floppy over time. I have a bag that I've used, I take it with me all the time when I am going to my daughter's dance classes, I bring my knitting in it and it just goes with me all the time and it's gone for years. And it still is holding up really well. Just the corners show a little bit of wear where you can see um, the, the color has worn away, but that would happen with any bag. So I'm very pleased with how this wears over time. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna line these guys right sides together. Now this can be a little slick, so you're gonna wanna make sure that you are using your clips for this. And I do not recommend pinning through this um, because you don't want to have unnecessary holes in the cork fabric. So um, Jessica is great with so many creations patterns. She has everything for a quarter inch seam because she is also a quilter. She comes from that world. So if you are also a quilter, you're not gonna be fussing around with like weird seam allowances that you're not used to. We just get to sew a nice straight quarter inch seam down here and then we're gonna press open and do some top, more top stitching. So I've reset my sewing machine to that standard quarter inch seam. I'm gonna go ahead and reinforce these stitches a little bit at the beginning, um, just because we are gonna be pressing those open. We're gonna have a recessed zipper. I don't want anything to come apart. I'm gonna stitch all the way to the bottom. Stitch in place again here. The other really great thing about cork fabric is you can iron it. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the seam open and I'm gonna start kind of by pressing it open with my fingers. And then I've got my iron on the cotton setting and I'm gonna press from the back just like I would if I were pressing a seam open here. And then I'm gonna do the same from the front. And that is a pretty, pretty flat seam. That is pretty good, especially for cork here. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wait for this cool down because it got a little hot. I'm gonna top stitch uh, along the sides. They recommend doing two lines of top stitching just for decorative purposes. You can decide what you wanna do. Um, I'm gonna do an eighth of an inch stitch and then a quarter inch stitch. And that eighth of an inch stitch should catch this here, this seam allowance. And that way it'll lay nice and flat, you know, for all time as you use your bag. All right, so I'm back to that 3.0 stitch length and that eighth of an inch stitch. And this time I'm lining the edge of the presser foot up with that seam exactly. I try to keep that as straight as possible. Now, rather than change my stitch around right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lift this up turn it around and sew my eighth of an inch stitch down the other side here. I don't even really need to break thread. 
I can just keep going here. All right, now I'm gonna move everything back to that regular quarter inch stitch. I still have that 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So what this is gonna do is lay a second line of stitching. It is purely decorative, but it's really critical that you sew as straight as possible or this is gonna look crooked in your final application. So take your time. Right, one more time down the other side. All right, now it's time to assemble this to our bag front. And we're gonna put a zipper on for this. If it were your bag back, all you would need to do is slip it right sides together, stitch along, pressure seams open, do your top stitching. But we're gonna insert a zipper here. It makes a really cool pocket that's on the outside later on in the process. Um, but we're gonna do a nice little double zip here so we can open it from either direction and have them looking really nice here. So part of the reason why it took us so long to do this tutorial is we needed to find a new zipper supplier and hardware supplier. And we ended up going with Sally Tomato and I have been so impressed with her products. Now, when you order directly from Sally Tomato, you buy it on these three yard zipper tapes with your poles all separate on here. So this one comes with nine poles. When you get it from us, um, we're just gonna give you the length that you need and price it out accordingly. And we're already gonna install your two zippers on here, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. That way if you get going crazy with this and you wanna get fancy with your zippers at home, you'll know how to do it. All right, so here we have our zipper tape and it works best if you open it up just a little bit. Now I'm gonna take and insert the sides of the zipper tape into the zipper. And you can do this if it's on the coil. It's just a lot easier if you have that little bit of the end that doesn't have the coil on it. Now I found it's easiest if you kind of clamp that down and pull, then you can get that going. All right, so we've got this zipper tape going so that the center is over here. So what I wanna do in order to make that meet is go all the way to the other end. And we're gonna do the same thing here. Just this time, we're going to have it coming from the other direction. So we're gonna start, same process. And the first couple of times you do this, it's, it's a challenge. Um, but once you do it, like maybe three, four times, it's not bad at all. So yeah, it just slid right on there. Okay, so now I can zip all the way through those three yards until I met in the center here. Now we got our zipper looking pretty good. It is, so one thing to look at here, see how I've got a little bit of extra zipper tape on that bottom half. So what I can do is I can take this off here and kind of reline it up and get it together again in a better way. Perfect, looking great. So you absolutely can do this at home with your zippers. Um, if you get situations like this where you get can purchase the poles separate, um, I think it's a more economical way of doing it, which is why we got it for you guys for your kit. And one of the things I really like about the Sally Tomato ones is these have a metal look, but they are plastic. So you're gonna be able to get a really high end look for your bag but you're not gonna be struggling with metal zipper tape, which sometimes just doesn't behave the way you want it to. All right, so now I need to get this cut to size because obviously we don't need all three yards. We can save that for another project. So what I'm doing here is my zipper tape end right here, and that's where the teeth are. So I've got that lined up at the edge, and then I'm gonna cut about an inch beyond over here. And I can just cut right across this because it's plastic. The gingers would have worked a little better, but my microchips went through it just fine. And one thing that I would highly recommend that you do at home is before you get stitching, go ahead and do a little stitch across here and then also across here. And you wanna stay where it's gonna be hidden in the seam allowances, but what that will do is keep you from accidentally sliding your zipper pull off when you're in the construction phase because it is totally possible to get them back on later, but it is not 
the simplest thing. Like you can do it, but it takes some fussing. So save yourself some headache to stitch across that and then you'll be good to go. So the other thing I really like about these Sally Tomato zippers is the packaging. Cause when you're all done, you can roll up your extra zipper tape. It's got your compartment for your extra zipper pulls. You can just slide the identifying packaging back in there and clip it back together. So now it's it's not as neat as when it came out. So I know that I've used a little bit out of this, but I know that it's black tape with the rose gold coil. I know I've got a number five nylon zip pull on there and I just am ready to pull for my next project. And if I end up needing more of something, I know exactly what I need. So I really am very impressed with these zippers. I'm very glad that we found them and that we're gonna be able to use them in our kits going forward for bags because they're just fantastic. The whole team as they've been working on these has really enjoyed the zippers. So uh, if you can get excited about zippers, any more excited like, we we are, we, we love these, they're really awesome. All right, I'm gonna take my own advice and stitch right across the zipper teeth. And you're not gonna break your needle, just go slow. And what that'll do is that'll keep me from stitching off the end as I'm doing my next steps. So in the interest of full transparency, I've screwed this section up twice now. Once when I made my original sample in Nocturne fabric, and then again, when I was doing the video. So pay very close attention here, because if you're like me, this is the part where you're gonna misread the directions and you're gonna mess something up. So we're going to put together our outside piece here, and that's gonna include having an outside pocket. So in order to have a functional outside pocket, we need pocket lining. This is the part that I keep screwing up and forgetting to put in until everything's all together and then I need to come back and do it. So if you see things like, you know, these that are, were not there before, don't worry, we're gonna show you how to do those next. I'm just doing it out of order because I had to unpick some seams and redo it. All right, so this is essentially going to be the order of things. We have our outside top, we're gonna have our zipper and our outside bottom. And to match those, we also have a outside bottom lining and an outside top lining, and they are going to be on opposite sides of the zipper. Now, in my case, I have directional fabric, so I wanna make sure that when I'm putting everything together that they're gonna be going up. You really are probably never gonna see this, but I like to have it be the way, you know, it's pointing in all in the right direction, so I know it's fabulous, even if no one's gonna see it. So what I've done is I've stitched down the sides of my zipper tape, that way I'm not going to accidentally zip those off, and then I also, have them pushed off to the side. That way when I line everything up, they're not gonna be in the way and I can just stitch straight down. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is flip that zipper tape right sides together with my bag bottom. And I am lining up where that zipper tape starts here with the edge. And I'm just going to put my clips in and I'm going to then line up the side here and the center. Now here is the part that is important and that I somehow keep forgetting to do every single time I make this bag. So I'm gonna flip this right sides together and I'm gonna make sure that my arrows are pointing up toward the top of the bag. So in this case, it's gonna be up toward that zipper tape. So my zipper is gonna be in the middle of these, sandwiched in between, but I'm lining up those edges and we're gonna stitch both of these down at the same time. And that is going to encase our lining on the inside of that zipper, and it's gonna look fantastic. All right, I'm gonna set these aside for now because we are not gonna need them for a little bit. Now, for this section, I want to use a zipper foot. They come with most sewing machines, even the really low end ones. What it has is it has this groove on the back and the zipper is gonna sit right in there. So we can see our zipper underneath here, and it's gonna sit like right on top of those teeth. So when I put it on here and I have this position like this, that zipper is going right inside this groove and I'm gonna be able to stitch right next to it because if you do this right, you're not gonna see the zipper at all, the zipper tape. You're just gonna see the teeth of it and it's gonna look fantastic, have that nice little pop of color. All right, so I'm gonna start just by lining that up and I currently have my zipper uh, needle, so that is in the center. I'm gonna actually bump that over two spaces because that's gonna get me as close to those teeth as possible without stitching through them. 
And you're gonna kinda have to experiment with that on your machine because each one is a little different. But this way I'm gonna be able to secure that lining, the zipper tape, and the outside bag bottom all together at once. And I'm just going really nice and slow because I really wanna be snugged up against the zipper teeth with that zipper foot. And I also wanna make sure I'm keeping all three of these layers really even next to each other. So that everything is the right size in the end. All right, we've got a moment of truth here. What we wanna do, there's a couple of things we're checking for here. One, we wanna make sure that we have an outside pocket with our zipper tape facing up. So that's where you can see the teeth and the coils and the zipper poles. And then on the other side, we should have our lining face up as well. And then the last thing we wanna check is to make sure our zipper works. You wanna make sure that you didn't stitch into those teeth and that the zipper is still functional. This is super great. I'm gonna go ahead and move that all over to the side. That way I don't have to worry about my zipper poles being in the way when I'm stitching the other half on. But for right now, I'm gonna press this and top stitch it. I'm gonna press this one side at a time. That way I get nice sharp presses for both. I'm gonna start with that outer edge and you can press over the zipper. It will not melt it, but I generally also don't spend a really long time on it either. I just kind of want to get it to go over and call it a day. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Pre-pressing is always a good idea when you're doing stuff like this. All right, that's pretty good. We're going to do one final open and close of that zipper. Make sure everything's going well, and it is. So now I'm going to switch to my regular foot, and I'm going to top stitch an eighth of an inch away from that zipper tape. And I'm going to switch to that 3.0 stitch length so that we can get that decorative length. One thing that may also be helpful is just, you know, popping a, a clip or two on here. Help make sure everything stays where it belongs. Now I'm really taking my time here. I've got the edge of the presser foot lined up with that fold in the cork for my bag bottom. And this is gonna be really obvious if it's not straight. So I just wanna take my time, go nice and slow, so we have nice professional looking stitching. Now occasionally things don't end up exactly the same size. So in my case, my lining is a little bit larger than my bag bottom. So I'm just gonna give that a trim so that everything is the same size going forward. All right, so now we've got our bag bottom with our outside pocket lining attached. Now it's time to do the same thing for the top. Now remember, if you're following along at home, you will not have these attached yet. We're covering that in a little bit. I just had to go back and pick because I forgot my lining. So what I'm gonna do here is we're going to be able to put things right sides together again. So I'm gonna start by flipping right sides together for our cat fabric and I'm going to go ahead and also if you're following along at home make sure that if this is directional that your cat is going forward and also don't worry we cover cutting off these edges too in a little bit so that's all it's all coming um, but make sure if you have a directional fabric that it is going up when we flip things right sides together so what I want to make sure I'm doing here is making sure that my edges are lined up with my bag bottom that's really important we wanna make sure we have a nice straight edge to our bag. So again, we're gonna clip on those sides and then again in the middle. Now on this other side, we need to have our top as well. And remember that we need to have these in the end going in the same direction. So if they're going up this way, then we can, and everything's going up, I can flip this over and later when they're sewn, together, they're all gonna still be pointing up. So at this point, I can line everything up. Again, get those edges super nice and even, and then clip through all three layers. Keep everything nice and together. And hit that center. Now we're gonna stitch down this with our zipper foot, turn it over, press it, and top stitch, just like the other one. The only difference is we're doing the back top now instead of the bottom. All right, now we can admire our zipper and we can go ahead and align those up so that they are in the middle. All right, so now we've got our cute little zipper in the middle. Everything is looking fantastic. 
And this is what it should look like from the front where we have our bag outside and our bag bottom. And then from the back, it should be fully lined like this. We should just be good to go and ready to sew this together later. Now I am going to trim up the sides here so that I've got that nice angle, but then we are ready to keep on going. And now we're gonna pick up where we actually should be at this point, and that is attaching our anchors and just pay careful attention at this step. Do not mess it up. You do not want to have to redo it a million times like I have. I shouldn't say a million. I've had to redo it once on each bag, but obviously it's a step that I keep missing, so you don't wanna miss it too. So all the measurements on how to cut your angles going up to the top, and then also where to mark to place our anchors, they're all available in the pattern. This is called the Ellie Handbag, and it is by So Many Creations. You can get a paper copy on our website. Um, we say it at the beginning, but this is basically meant to be a supplemental guide for anyone who is a visual learner. And we always partner with So Many Creations. And that if you want all the cutting instructions and the measurements and where to put what, go support the pattern designer, go support us as an independent um, as retailer and get it from them. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to add our anchor points. So I've already point, put in the line of where everything needs to be for the top and then also where I need to have those centered. Now for these textured loop anchor points, and they all go in a little bit different, but for these in particular, what we're going to do is we're gonna take these prongs and we're going to push them up so that they are going out at a 90 degree angle like so. Now the prongs on my other ones are coming out right at where this line is. So what I wanna do is I want to line this up so that my prongs are right on top and that this line, when I look at it, it's going straight in the middle of where those prongs are. So I need to make a mark where we need to do that. And I'm just taking a friction gel pen and making a mark right underneath where those feet are. And for this top one, since I'm doing it on the line, I'm actually making the mark next to it on the outside. That way I know I need to kind of cut in between these two holes and then at the bottom right here and right here. So that way I can slide that through. Now I'm gonna repeat that on the other side. And you wanna really take your time here because you wanna make sure that these are gonna be looking straight up and down when your bag is all together. All right, so now that I have all that marked, I need a really pointy scissor. Like these microtip scissors are great. The Ginger embroidery scissors also great. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna fold it in half right where that mark is. And I'm gonna give a teeny little snip because we don't want a big snip because this needs to be covered. And then you wanna make sure that your point is going through that. Now do not poke it through. I did that on one of my sample bags and it actually tore the stitching line and now you can see where the threads got pulled. Um, but you do wanna make sure that it has gone all the way through, but, don't, but be gentle with it as you're working on it. All right, so I'm gonna repeat that and get all these opened up here. All right, so now we're gonna take this piece here and we're gonna put it in where I made those clips. They can be kind of hard to see from the front. No one there, where's my other one? Here we go. Just gonna slide them right in those holes. When you're done, flip it over and then you're gonna center these anchor clips on the back. And then you can push these back. And that helps hold everything in place. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other one. Now there's one more thing you can do to give this a little bit of stability. And you're gonna take the extra uh, fusible that you have, and we're gonna lay that with the fusible side facing the anchor strap. And this is the one time ever that I'm gonna iron with the fusible up and I'm making dang sure that I am not gonna put my iron on fusible, but I'm just gonna get that kind of set in place here. And what this does is it just kind of gives a little bit of barrier between that hardware and your lining. So it's gonna help everything last a little bit longer. 
because it just has a little bit of extra something in between. So I'm gonna get that lined up there. We'll do the same thing on the other side, then we'll press from the other side as well. Now from this side, I can get a lot closer and really hit that fusible a lot better. I'll get it to stick a little bit better there. There is in fact one more thing I'm going to do here. So that way these edges are going to be treated as one later. I'm just gonna do a stay stitch an eighth of an inch around the edges of my sides and really all the edges. So that way they can all be treated as one when we are ready to go later. Now, I am absolutely loving how this looks. I think it looks so fantastic. That rose gold with the pink cat is just, it looks absolutely fantastic. Now I have already done the everything for the bag back. I did that before I got on camera. I did two lines of stitching there. I think I'm just gonna stick with one here because this is gonna line up um, with the bottom here. Cause you'll see that we've got our bag. It's gonna line right up there. And we wanna make sure that these kind of come together like that. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna move my zipper poles back to the center. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut off my excess zipper tape. Now, if you wanna, again, take a little stitch across here and here to make sure that you don't lose those when you are stitching things together, by all means do that. Uh, it would definitely be a good idea. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a little trim though. That way we don't have all the bulk in that seam allowance. Now, one thing I found when making the sample is depending on how you put together your zipper pull, sometimes the heights of these don't end up being the exact same. So you can see here that this ends up being a tad bit shorter. Um, on this side. So what I like to do is just layer them on top of each other and then um, go ahead and um, trim accordingly. So that way we can have things at the same height. Now what's important is that the cork bottoms meet up because we want this to be a nice seamless transition across the sides of the bag. So we're nice, that, that already has hit. That's really good so we don't have to worry about that. But, um, and this is unfortunate because I did a ton of work ahead of time so that way I wouldn't have as much to do on camera for you guys. Um, I am gonna have to trim off a little bit on the top of this, which means these bag handles are gonna stick up a little bit higher than the bag itself, which is not the end of the world, um, but maybe do this step before you get to that part. Um, so what I'm gonna do here, this bag has some recess lining here that's going to come in some. So what I want to do is I want to mark off where that's going to be and then also where I need to trim in order to make this the same size on the front and back. I'm just lining up the tops of my cork here. Now what I can do is I can take my chalk marking tool and I can just kind of trace out where that ends on both sides. That way I can create that same angle and also I'm gonna mark where the lower piece ends so that way I can trim the top of this off as well and be able to have everything be the same size. This is gonna be something that's just gonna make more sense when you're actually in there doing it, but I'm gonna go ahead and give everything a trim now. And if you want, you can kind of leave everything together as you do this. That might make your life a little easier. All right, now it's time to add some bag handles. So I'm working with my front. Uh, you're gonna do the same process for the back too. Um, and you want your bag handle. So when I uh, put my handles together, I want that single fold to be facing the outside. So that's what people are seeing. The double fold is kind of ugly. So we wanna, we wanna hide that in our shoulder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to line this up so that way these pieces are kind of floating down like so and I'm going to put my piece in and I'm going to fold it to the point where that interfacing is ending. So here's where my interfacing is. This is where I have the most flexibility because I don't have 
four layers of canvas and four layers of interfacing. And we're actually gonna fold it down two times here. And then we can put this over the top. Now, once I've got that done, I can go ahead and stitch across this four or five times in order to secure it in place. To give myself a little bit more wiggle room under the sewing machine, I'm turning down just a teeny bit, maybe maybe eighth of an inch. And then I'm turning that under again. And that is going to conceal all my raw edges. I've got a few strings hanging there. I can trim those later. And then I can flip this over and I've got still where that interfacing is ending right at the tip of that anchor strap. And then I'm just going to take a clip to hold everything in place so we can see really well that that is held in place there. And then what I'm gonna do is just stitch straight across right here, right the top at this, about four or five times back and forth, just using my reverse stitch in order to get that in place. Now, before I do that, I just wanna be able to do both sides at once. Make sure you are not twisting your handles. You wanna make sure that everything is going in one direction and that you have that single fold facing out. Now, I'm actually going to flip everything over so that the side that has turned under is up. That way I can arrange everything under the sewing machine and I know I'm gonna be able to catch where I turn that over double. I'm just gonna start by stitching forward and this is thick, so you might have to get it going a little bit. Give it a little push. All right, so I'm gonna stop when I hit that, that stitching line and I'm gonna back stitch across there. So that's two. We're going three forward, four is going back, and then five is going forward. I'm gonna go ahead and stitch in place a few times there, and then cut my threads. Now I'm gonna repeat everything on the second half of that strap. All right, there is one more thing that we need to do to finish prepping our front of our bag. So we've already got our lining for our front pocket, and this is also going to be the lining for our front pocket. And this will not be visible from the inside of the bag, but it will be visible when you open up that front pocket. So for example, when we have this all together and we open it up, you're going to see that nice full lining on the inside and all our arrows are pointing up because we took our time with that. So what we're gonna do here is we're just going to do a nice little stay stitch around the edge of everything. This is going to enclose all of our edges here for our lining and our pocket and then also this part here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do all of my clipping along my edges and then just stitch an eighth of inch seam allowance around the entire thing. All right, we are finally ready to assemble our outside bag. We should have our bag front, which has our lining pieces and our fully functional pocket. And the back is just gonna be that plain uh, interfacing from that lining piece that's only gonna be visible from that outside pocket. And our back is much less complicated. We just have our top, our bottom, and then there's going to be the interfacing on the back. So I'm gonna arrange these guys right sides together. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one on top because then I can make sure, as so I'm sewing my quarter inch seam around, that I'm stitching on the inside of that station seam that I use to get everything together for these layers. And that way that stitch won't be visible in the final bag. So now when we're clipping this together, we wanna to pay really close attention to where our bottoms are lining up. Now, when I trim my bag to get my sides to the same height, I made sure that these bag bottoms, my cork, was going to be level with each other so it would be one continual piece all around. So I wanna make sure that that is right on top of each other when I am clipping this together. And I'm going to pay attention to that first. And from there, clip my corners. On our bottom, we also have our center seams here to match up. So we wanna make sure those are right on top of each other so that it meets perfectly in the center on the bottom. Go ahead and get your corners again. Then we're gonna repeat on the other side. All right, now we're not gonna do anything to the top. We need that open, but we are gonna stitch down the edges and the bottom. We're gonna leave this part open because we're gonna use that to create our box corners. I've got my sewing machine set back to that quarter inch stitch. I'm gonna start by reinforcing that edge. You're gonna have a lot of stress on that 
as we turn everything right side out, I don't want it to pop open. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stitch around and I'm making sure to be inside of that eighth of an inch stitch that we did to secure all those layers on that front of our bag for that outside pocket. All right, I'm gonna reinforce at the bottom again and then keep that process going around the edges. We're almost there. The outside of our bag is almost done. All right, now we have to do our bag corners and we're gonna create those box corners which creates the depth of our bag. And what you're gonna do is kind of just grab it and pull it out. And then I kind of like to like make sense of where the seam allowance makes the most sense to go. Now this is our bag front, which means this is where the zipper is gonna go. That zipper is gonna to wanna to go this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and press that seam, the side seam to my right, which means my bottom seam is gonna be going to my left. Now we want to try and get this part as straight as possible and then I'm going to throw a clip on that seam join just to kind of keep it in place. Now on the other side, since we have the bottom seam going this way, I kind of want the same thing to be happening here. That way it will lay nice and it will be going the same way. It won't try to flip halfway through and now we're good to go here. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I find it easiest to lay it in the sewing machine where the side is on the sewing machine like plate. And now I'm gonna stitch over this two, three times, just going straight across with that quarter inch stitch. And then our bag outside is complete. All right, we're gonna start by reinforcing those stitches and then go ahead and stitch across. Reinforce when you get to the end. And then I'm going to do that again about two, three times. All right. Fun part where we get to turn everything right side out. Do be careful. We don't want to rip any stitches, but this is a really fun part of the bag making process. to pat yourself on the back because we've done a thing. We have gotten the outside together. It is looking fantastic. We've got our outside pocket that is fully lined. We have our nice rose gold hardware that is really just making those cats look fabulous. We have our nice sturdy bag bottom made from that cork fabric. Everything is just really exciting. It looks absolutely gorgeous. All right, we do have to set our lovely bag outside aside because we're gonna work on our lining next. All right, so we're going to have two divided pockets that are gonna sit inside of our lining. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna fold these guys right sides together and stitch a quarter inch seam down the side of both of them. And that is going to eventually be hidden inside. Now we're going to take our lining and we're going to press the seam open, but we want to make sure not to press any of these sections because we're going to need to turn this right sides together. So what I do is I just kind of take the tip of my iron and I do not put the sides down. I just am running the tip of the iron straight down the center of that seam to get that pressed open. So that way I'm not having to unpress something else later. Now we're going to flip this right sides out. And here's that seam. I wanna have that kind of be at the bottom of what's going to be the divided pocket in the back. So you won't ever see it, but I'm just gonna press, it's about an inch up. It's really super arbitrary of where you put that. Just kind of put it toward the bottom of that seam. Now I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch just across the top of this. And remember, I've got all my triangles pointing up, so I'm gonna I'll consider this to be my top and just stitch a quarter inch away from the edge. If you want to switch to thread that matches your lining for this point, go right on ahead. I'm just going to continue on, I think, with my gray and go from there. Now I found when I made both my bags that my pocket was too long. So just go ahead and cut it down to the size that your lining actually is. 
So I'm not going to give you the measurement because that is included in the Ellie pattern, which you can get on our website. It's by So Many Creations. But what you're gonna to wanna to do is line the top of the pocket up down from the top. It's gonna to give you a specific inch measurement where the top of that should be aligned. And then you're also gonna to want to draw a line down the middle. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna clip on the sides here and that is going to give me where I need to stitch along the edges, but I'm actually gonna stitch from the other side because you can see that this is coming in some and the pocket is going straight out. So we're gonna to have to compensate for that. But once you have everything laid out so that your pocket starts the specific inch measurement down and you've drawn your line straight down the center, what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this over and we're gonna sew that eighth inch stitch going all the way around on the sides. Or you could also, actually this is probably the easier way to do it. I'm just gonna go ahead and trim off this extra with my little scissors here. That way I can do everything from the other side. That'll be a lot easier. Now that those little extras have been trimmed off, I can just start a little bit above this pocket, stitch all the way down, do an eighth of an inch stitch, do an eighth of an inch stitch across the bottom of the pocket and then back up again. And then we're gonna stitch straight down the center here. And I make sure to reinforce my stitches a little bit above where that seam starts and a little bit below, just to make sure that that has lots of staying power. So that way, if you're throwing your keys in there, or you're digging around, you're not gonna rip those stitches out. When you reach the bottom of the divided pocket, make sure to stop before you reach all the way down. That way when you stitch across, your edge of your presser foot is gonna be able to be even with the bottom of that pocket. Now for the center divider, what I'm doing is I have my needle in the center position and I'm starting a little bit above where that pocket starts. And I'm gonna start and I'm gonna back stitch that a couple of times. That way if I'm throwing keys in, I'm not gonna rip those stitches out. Now when I reach the bottom, I'm gonna sew a little bit beyond. I'm gonna back stitch here too. That's not as stressful as a point, so if you don't do it as much there, that's fine. So we're getting to the end. Right now we're going to work on our recessed zipper. So we're gonna use a little steam a steam to help us get this together a little bit easier here. We have four of these to prepare. They're all gonna be prepared the same way. So first I'm gonna take one of the strips and I'm just gonna put it upside down. And steam a seam is nice for this um, because it has a paper backing on it. So that way we're going to be able to glue it down and have our iron on this, let it cool, and then be able to peel it off in a minute. So what we're gonna do here is I'm just going to measure out the length of this piece here. And I'm just going to tear it off. You don't need scissors or anything. And I'm gonna place it so that it's even with the outside of my recessed zipper pocket here. Now I'm gonna take my iron and I'm just going to go over that. It doesn't take a lot, just a teeny little bit is perfectly fine. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now you wanna give this ample time to cool or you're gonna be pulling off the tape with it. But this side over here has cooled down while I applied the other. So just kind of get your fingernail underneath there and peel the tape off. It might not be hard to see on camera, but the fusible strip of glue is still on that side. And it adds like a, a little layer of stiffness. So that way when you flip it over, it's really easy to get a nice crisp turn like that. You want it to be about a quarter inch. And once that's down, you can see it's already kind of sticking, but we're gonna heat set that as well with our iron. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side and we're gonna repeat for all of them. All right, so now we are going to add some more steam machine so that we can press down a side for our recessed zipper. But this one is gonna be slightly more complicated because what I want to have happen is have my points meet in the center. And if I can get it to work out, I'm gonna try to get them to line up. Like this one, they line up maybe a little bit better than this one. Let's see if we can get them going. Oh, that's perfect. See how they're like 
pointing right into each other. It looks really nice. So I'm gonna want these to be my outside here. And then these will have pointing in as well, like so. So this outside part, the part that's going to be sewn into our bag top, that we're gonna leave raw. The part that we want to turn under is the part that's going to be putting with our zipper right down the center. So that's the part that we want to turn under. So for me, that's going to be where the tips of these triangles are. If you have directional fabric, just take a couple extra seconds to figure out what you want to do with that. And then you are good to start going. So putting the fusible tape on for the long end, it's just like the short end, except since it's a little bit longer, what we can do is we can kind of stick it as we go rather than just kind of measure and rip it off. So what you can do is you can just kind of stick it as you go down the side and then you can just tear it off when it's a little bit shy. Then we're ready to put the iron to it. The other thing that's different about this is we're actually going to be putting it on the right side of the fabric and then we're going to be pressing it so that way when we um, attach it to the zipper everything is already turned under and ready to go and it'll stick to the zipper and help hold everything in place. So now what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and go over the top. Now we're gonna leave this paper in place. But what we're going to do is we're just gonna turn everything over like this and give it a press just to get that crease in there. Then when we're ready to attach it to the zipper, everything's already turned under and we're actually gonna be able to stick it in place on our zipper. I can actually kind of show you right here. I don't have my pull on yet. But we're gonna be able to just put it right in there, press that in place, and also press its twin underneath. And that way we will just be good to go and we won't have to worry about a thing. It'll just be ready to sew together. All right, we're gonna do a little something to make sure that our zipper pull never goes straight off the edge. I'm just gonna go ahead and open these zipper teeth. And what I wanna do is take this upper part and just kinda of turn it in like that to create a right angle. I'm just going to put a little clip in place now to help kinda of hold that spot. A pin would work too. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I kinda of wanted to turn in and be the same height. That way it ends at the same place because we will be able to see the zipper end there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do like a tacking stitch right in the zipper tape here with our sewing machine. And what that'll do is we'll be able to pull the zipper up, but not beyond that area. It just will not go any further. And so that way our zipper will be nice and functional, but it's not going to have to continually put that zipper pull back on and in place. Now I actually think a pin does look just a little bit better for this step because I can actually slide it underneath and then I can pull the pin out from behind. Now I just selected a simple zigzag stitch. I really just wanna go over those zipper teeth or the zipper tape, not the zipper teeth, just to get them nice and secured in place. So I've just kinda of gone back and forth a little bit. And now that's nice and tacked in place and we're not going to have our zipper pull go off. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. All right, so now it is time to attach our recess zipper lining over the top of our zipper. And these were the ones where the points were coming together as close as possible. So it's gonna look good when you're looking at it from the top. So I'm gonna get these lined up. And this is the point where we're going to remove our paper backing. And I'm going to line it up so that it's extending maybe about half an inch or so beyond the edge of that zipper where we tucked it down. And then because we have that fusible tape underneath, you're able to just take your iron and lay this on. And be careful as you're doing it, you wanna to try to make it sure that you have equal amounts on the sides of the zipper across the entire tape so that it looks nice and neat and professional. Now I'm not gonna go any further than here because I don't wanna glue this to my pressing surface, um, but it will, will have a piece underneath here that it'll go to in a minute. All right, so now I'm gonna take the tape off here and we're gonna repeat on the other side, lining everything up. All right, so I'm starting at this edge, keep everything nice and in alignment. I also wanna try and make sure I'm keeping the same distance from the zipper teeth so I can see the same amount of zipper tape on this side as I can on the other. 
You also could kind of go like right up to the zipper teeth if you want. If you want to have a similar look to that bag front. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to put it on the bottom. For this part, we're going to turn everything over. And I'm trying to line it up this time with the edges of the lining on the top because we want it to look like we sewed it down. And we will. We're going to top stitch in a minute. But for right now, I want it to perfectly match with my side edges and my bottom edges so that everything is good to go. This part here is basically the most time consuming step that we have left. Once it's done, then we are ready to go and get our bag put together. But as zipper installs go, I would say this one's pretty foolproof because we pretty much have everything fused in place before we do any stitching. So you know everything is gonna look good before you put those stitch marks in. All right, so before we do anything, I'm just gonna unzip to make sure I didn't get anything too close and also get my zipper tooth out of the way so I can just stitch all the way down. Make sure not to zip all the way off the edge. You can remember always stitch a straight line across your zipper teeth. That will prevent you from doing that. But at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to stitch, top stitch all the way around here. That's at that 3.0 stitch length and I like to set my seam to an eighth of an inch stitch for that. One final thing we wanna do is create a little tab for the end of the zipper. That way again, when we're unzipping, we don't accidentally go all the way off. What I've done is I've taken a leftover piece of cork. The instructions for the pattern also has a example of how to measure if you're using quilter's cotton for this. But what I've done, my zipper tape is one inch wide, so I cut mine to one and a quarter, that way it'll hang off a little bit. And since cork doesn't unravel on the end, I can leave that raw edge. And so I cut it to two and a half inches wide, that way it's gonna be a nice square when it's folded over. So now I can take here and I can just trim off even where the zipper tape ends, so that I have a nice square edge. And I can take this and just stick it in the center, like so put a little clip on either side, and then I'm gonna stitch around the edges, all the way around and across the top, and that's going to just have a nice little end gap here, so that way when I unzip, I can't accidentally go all the way off, and it's gonna coordinate in with our bag bottom, so it'll be a nice little touch. All right, here's our finished recessed zipper. It is ready to be installed into our lining and then put our bag together. Now, it's, it's a time-consuming zipper. There's a lot of parts to it. But like I said, because we are essentially gluing everything down first, it is a lot easier to make it turn out correctly because you're gonna be able to preview and know everything is where it should be before you're sewing. So it really turns out very, very nice and it's not that bad. It just takes a little bit of time to do. So now it's time to create the recess portion of our recess zipper. To start with, we're gonna measure off one inch from the top and I'm just gonna take my rotary cutter and cut alongside this. Don't throw this out, we're gonna need it in a second. So I'm just gonna set that with it and cut the top off the other side of my lining. All right, so we have our recess zipper, we have the piece that we just cut off and then we have the main body of our lining. Now we wanna make sure that we have our recess zipper pull on the left, that way we can pull it that way. You might wanna do it different if you're a lefty. But what we're gonna do is lay this and center it because this is lining, eventually it's gonna kinda of be upright like this. So that way the bag will be upright, they'll be able to unzip from the top of the bag because it won't work very well if it is from the bottom. All right, so once you have that pretty well in alignment, what I'm actually gonna do real quick, just because whenever I have multiple pieces like this and they're kind of thick and kind of easy to get astray, I like to give a clip first before I get started, just to make sure I have that first set of layers all together. Now I'm gonna take this recessed bit and with that longer edge that used to be right here, we're gonna flip it so it's right sides together and we're gonna also align those edges. So that way our points are nice and aligned with where the edges were and everything is set here. So now, if you can envision it, when everything is set in, this piece is going to be sticking straight up and then this will be your bag top and eventually we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. 
But what I'm gonna do right now is stitch a quarter inch seam across here. I am gonna back stitch at the front and back just to make sure everything is good to go. All right, we're gonna do that back stitching just to keep everything nice and secure there. And just straight quarter inch stitch across. So this alignment is really similar to the other one, just since we already have the zipper attached, it's gonna have that piece already there as well. So I've got my lining piece that I haven't done anything to yet here. And we're gonna go ahead and put this on. And again, we want to center that. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my clips on just to kinda keep that in place and keep all my edges aligned before I do anything else. All right, now we're gonna take that piece that we cut off and with the long edge facing, we're gonna flip it over and we are also gonna match up those corners and then sew our quarter inch seam. All right, so we can kind of see how this is gonna work. Eventually this is gonna sit inside and we got our nice zipper facing up so everything looks the way it should. This is what it is going to look from the zipper side up and this is what it should look like from the zipper side down. All right, now it is time to assemble our bag aligning. This is really similar to the top. The only difference here is that we kind of want to line things up here. So we've got our recess zipper sections. We want those to match up. So I'm gonna put a clip right at the bottom of those. Um, if you want to match up your pockets at the bottom, you certainly can. Um, that's going to be an interior detail, so nobody's gonna ever see that but you or whoever you're gifting it to. And we're gonna do the same with our bottom. The difference between this bag bottom and a bag bottom that we did before is that we're gonna leave an opening large enough to turn it. So I really only stitch about two inches in on either side. And sometimes it's nice to put like a little clip there to remind yourself, okay, it's time to stop. That way you don't like get on a roll and sew the whole thing shut and have to unstitch it. That's no fun. Um, but we're just gonna leave this part open so we can turn everything out and then we're gonna repeat on the other side. Then what we're gonna do is stitch down our sides completely, the bottom two corners, and then we're ready to create the box corner like we did on the outside. And this should all be very familiar because we've already done it once with the outer part of the bag. Again, always reinforce those stitches at the beginning and the end keep everything nice and strong. Now remember we did a stitch on the side of an eighth of an inch stitch here. So we wanna make sure that we're stitching inside that just like we did on the bag front. Or rather on the outside so that the stay stitch is concealed in the final bag. Reinforce those stitches. All right, I'm just gonna stitch a little of the way here again, leave that opening for turning. Go ahead and reinforce that. Then we're just gonna pick up on the other side Again, reinforce, that's gonna get a lot of pressure right there when you flip it right side out. I'm gonna unzip this a little bit just so I have a little bit easier access to the inside to put my hand in. And now it's time to create those box corners. This is the exact same as creating the box corners for the outside. And you just wanna kinda make sure that everything's going in the same direction. So I've got my bottom facing this way to my left. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Go ahead and let that go to the left. That way everything is nice and tidy on the inside of your bag as well. All right, so now we're just gonna stitch straight across here. You wanna do that maybe a couple times because this is a point where the bag is gonna get some stress and that way it won't come apart on you after you put in all this work to create it in the first place. I always start off by reinforcing those stitches. I'm gonna stitch all the way across and reinforce again. 
Then I'm gonna do it one more time for good measure. All right, so I've got my bag top and we're gonna be putting everything together now. All right, so we wanna make sure that our zipper is completely out and you wanna think what side do I wanna open this from? So for me, I like to open this way, which means I'm gonna to wanna to make sure my zipper is on the right of the front side. So the side where we have our pocket zipper here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to set this inside of it. That way we don't have to turn our lining right side out. All right, you wanna make sure to tuck in all of these as well. So we wanna make sure that everything is tucked inside, including this zipper because we are, that's gonna be kind of inside that top and we don't wanna sew that in. All right, so now we're gonna match up our seams on our sides, our middles, and then we're gonna be able to stitch around the top. And again, I like to have my seams going in opposite directions here, and but the same opposite direction on both sides here. So let's see, I've got this one going to the back, so we're gonna have this one go to the back as well. I'm just gonna work my way clipping around the rest of that bag. All right, so you're probably not gonna see very well because the entire bag is gonna take up my side camera, but we're just gonna stitch all the way around, twice around the top, and we're doing that with just our regular quarter inch stitch, 2.0 stitch length. All right, so now that I've made it around one time and I've got all my clips off, I'm gonna go ahead and take this side compartment off. It's gonna make it a lot easier to make it around that second time because the entire bag will just slide right underneath, just like if you were sewing like a hem on a dress or something. All right, we now have the really fun part where it gets to actually look like a bag. We're gonna take that hole we left for turning and we are going to very gently work our bag out through it. All right, before you stuff your lining all back in, you're gonna make sure that you are pushing out your pockets and making sure that these edges look very nice and then we can shove everything back in. I'm gonna make it harder on myself later, but um, you may also want to stitch close your lining first, either by hand or machine, but I just wanna show you guys the finished step, so I'm gonna do that later. All right, I've got everything mostly in. Now there's a few other things that need to be done here because we need to press this top and we need to do a top stitching all the way around. So what I'm gonna do here is first get everything down because remember this recess lining, that's gonna be kind of inside the bag, so it's called it's recess. So I'm just kind of giving it a good press with my fingers and then I'm gonna go through and press it with the iron as well. I'm gonna take my trusty spray mister and get that outside good and damp so it holds that press really well without having to use steam. All right, my goal here is to have everything meet really nicely at the edges, but if it has to roll, I want the lining to roll to the inside. That is ideal so you don't see that popping out from the front. Now this is something that will be easier to do on the edge of an ironing board at the pointy bit, uh, but I want you guys to be able to see so we are doing it here on the flat surface, but know that it's easier if you just kind of Shove your ironing board tip inside that bag. All right, so I placed my little hinges a little too close to the edge. So rather than sewing the quarter inch from the other side, I'm basically lining it up to sew a quarter inch to where I need to keep my bag lined up with the center of my pressure foot. So know that you might be doing it a little different. I'm gonna go around twice for here as well, just to give it a ton of extra stability. And I always like to start in the back, that way if there's any like gobbly gook, it's gonna be hidden because it's against your body. Just go slow at this step. And again, you can do a 3.0 stitch length because this is a decorative top stitching. But you want everything to be nice and neat so that it looks very nice, very professional when you are carrying it around and your friends will be like, oh, where'd you get that bag? You'll be like, I made it. Isn't it fabulous? All 
All right, so we have got our finished bag and I, I just love how this turned out. It looks so cute. That rose gold with the cats is just absolutely fantastic. And I just love the details in this bag. We have inside, we have our double pockets here to hold all your cell phone, your wallet, whatever you gotta throw in there. And then we have the nice recessed pocket so we can just you know, put that in there and it's out of the way. We can tuck everything down. This could even like fit inside so that way you don't see it. It just kind of lives inside the bag like that. And this is the coolest detail where we can unzip that and be able to store things in here. And that lining does go all the way up. So if you needed to like put a letter or something in here, you could, there's plenty of space for it. Or if you just wanna put your keys in and the double zip is just great because you can grab at it from both sides, really get what you need out of there. Our video editor was in when I was filming the first half of this video. And she's like, this is the perfect like mom bag once you get out of the diaper stage because you can fit a snack in here, you can fit a little water bottle, plus everything that you need. And it really, it just is really a, a nice little bag. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the one that we made out of Nocturne, which is my fabric collection. We have a little bit of fabric left of that and we decided it would make a cute looking bag. So we'll grab that to take a peek at. So this is a Nocturne version of that bag. We use the painterly fabric, which looks a little bit like cork, but definitely doesn't have that cork price because it's quilting cotton. And so we use that for our bag bottom. And then we used our Toss Owl, which has that painterly kind of background to it. So it really ties in very nicely. And we use graphite for that. And for that one, the background for this is that wood grain, which we're gonna see again in a minute on the inside. And then we have, of course, the coordinating hardware up top. And I set these down a lot further than the ones on my other one. And let me tell you, it was a lot easier to go around the top when you're doing it that way. So I highly recommend doing that. But here we have our recessed zip on this one. And again, we've got that nice little wood grain on the inside. And for this one, I used, again, a little bit of the bag bottom. And this one is just regular fabric. So you don't have to use a cork and the instructions tell you how to do it if you don't wanna use it. But this just turned out really cute, really fun. And I'm, I'm excited to add it to my collection of Nocturne bags. You can't see it as well anymore because I've got our YouTube 100,000 subscriber award in front of it. So thank you all for that as well. Um, but this one is just cute. It's fun, it's adorable, and a brand new kit for you guys. All right, so here we have both bags. We have the one in the cotton and steel version and has the canvas top and the cork bottom. This is going to be a really sturdy, structured bag. So if you want something that is really gonna last, this is it. It is gonna be absolutely fabulous for you. Um, it is a higher price tag because the canvas is about twice the price of quilting cotton and by the yard and the cork is also more expensive. But if you're looking for something that can really take a beating, this is it. Um, this is equally lovely and it will also wear really well over time. It just won't last as long as this one and take the same amount of beading um, as the other will. But by the time you get that decor bond interfacing in, like I don't have anything in this bag. It is standing up on its own. It retains its structure really well because of those box cleats on the bottom. Looks really, really good. So either option is great. We've got our cotton and steel or we've got our one that's made it completely of quilting cotton. So the price is gonna be a little better on that. And again, that's made from Nocturne, which is my fabric collection. So you can have a little bit of Stephanie going around with you. And you know, how is always fun. And these colors are super trendy right now. So, you know, fun times. Well, thanks so much for following along. Make sure you check out all of our other bag tutorials using So Many Creations patterns. I love Jessica's patterns from So Many Creations because she was a quilter first. So she writes with our brains in mind and how we read instructions. And so this is just meant to be a supplemental guide for you visual learners out there. You still need to get the pattern and support Jessica. You can get it on our website. And if you get a kit, it will be included in it. And it was just a lot of fun, a real fun bag to make. And I think it is gonna look absolutely fantastic as you go around with it. All right, so check out all the goodies over at shop.quiltandexonymous.com. And until next time, happy quilting. <music>